Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, I'm just curious, what are you enjoying now that, uh, if you are able to at this point, now that the lockdowns have been easing up? We'll talk about that at the end of the video. For now, let's take a look at the pens. Alright, so these are the pens that I've been using this week. Since I published my review of it, I can finally admit that I own this Twisby Draco. Uh, I still have some ink left in my Parker Streamline, Parker Dualfold Streamline Junior. Gotta get it right. And interestingly, it's not much bigger than this little Caveco Sport, because I'm going to be hiking, so I wanted a pen I can put in my shorts pocket and not worry about it getting lost. Um, Aurora Style, Parker Frontier, Schaefer Imperial Deluxe 2, a nice pen from the 1970s. My Inko from Poland, which is probably from the 60s, I think. 50s or 60s. Uh, Platinum 3776, which appeared in a live stream I did last week, last uh, Saturday, about music nibs and all the random stuff that happens <laughs> during a live stream. And finally, my Aurora 88, which has been my daily writer pen this week. And last, I guess. As always, I'll be writing my writing samples in this cognitive surplus. It has been pointed out to me that the last few weeks I've been writing the wrong month. So I got it right this time. I made a special effort just for you. Alright, so the first pen is this Twisby Draco, which is Dragon. Uh, I got some interesting Harry Potter references, uh, not including Draco Malfoy. The, um, I guess he's the villain, I don't know, I, I don't, he's the blonde kid anyway. But anyway, uh, beautiful finish on it. Talks from the heart, talked me into it, and I'm glad she did. Oh, and I just thought of something that I will edit out through the magic of video editing, but, uh, I've got somebody asked me how this compares to a certain Monte Grappa. So, I don't remember the name of that Monte Grappa right at the moment, because I wasn't planning to do this, so I didn't write it down. Uh, but, had no experience with it, no interest in it, really. But I do own a Monte Grappa. So this is a Monte Grappa Fortuna. This is on my pile of pens to be sold, and what I noticed is the silhouette on this one this person was asking about is a bit different from this silhouette. And the finish is definitely different. But the nib looked a lot the same. A lot of other things looked the same. So one thing which several people cited with my video on the Draco. The Draco does have a smaller nib. This, uh... Oh, shoot, it's got a brand new material too and I totally forgot what it is. But anyway, it has a number 6 nib. For whatever that's worth. Uh, the Draco is a piston filler. The Monte Grappa in question, just like this one, the cartridge converter filler. Now it may be screwed in like this one is, which gives a little more security, but uh, you know, metal threads. Monte Grappa, oh plastic on metal, hmm, never realized that before. Monte Grappa makes decent pens. I, I don't like most of them because they're just too gaudy for my tastes, but uh, anyway, uh, I guess it would come down to personal preference. So this is the Twisby Draco. I have a broad nib in it. Uh, some people, I mentioned they didn't like the small nib on this. It actually doesn't bother me at all. But then again, I buy a lot of vintage pens, and it's very rare that I buy a modern pen anymore, because they're too darn expensive. Uh, the ink in this is Bungu Box. Sweet Potato Purple. Dan Quayle would get in trouble with this ink. Oops, and I just got in trouble. Potato. 
purple. I think it's a very nice purple. I don't know if you can tell, but some of last week's writing kind of bled on, bled through, so we'll see. So, not a nib that's, you know, particularly uh, flexy or anything, but uh, a very nice nib, a very enjoyable nib, so that's really the important thing. I enjoy writing with it. Here is a, a, one of my earlier pen restorations. It was back before I started videoing them, and I learned a lot about uh, Parker's from this one. But this is a Parker Dual Fold Streamline Junior in the jade finish. One thing you'll notice is that the barrel is much darker than the cap. That's because the old latex sac decayed in there and gave off some kind of sulfur fumes that uh, discolor the celluloid that this is made out of. You'll see that with a lot of old, old pens. And I've never read of any way to really fix it. So I just embrace it like I embrace my growing collection of gray hairs. Can't do anything about it, so live with it. And the ink in it is the lovely Parker Quink Green, which they really need to bring back. I was kind of surprised by how many colors Parker used to have and then discontinued. Uh, of course, at least they haven't discontinued their washable blue. That honestly is the one I probably use the most. My next pen, like I said, I'm planning to do a hike. I was going to do it today, but then I thought, no, I got too much to do. Plus, I heard thunder rumbling this morning, and uh, it's a hike in the Badlands. And if you know the Badlands, they're not fun to hike in after it rains, because all that clay turns into slime. But anyway, you know, this is not a pen that I particularly enjoy long writing sessions with. What I like about this pen is it fits in my pocket. If I do lose it, I'm not out that much money, and uh, I'll just buy another one. So this is the Caveco Sport. And you may well ask, well, what would you be writing down out there in the, in a, on a hike anyway? I don't know, but if I don't bring a pen, I'll, I'll want to write something down. Uh, what ink did I put? Oh, yeah. Uh, so ODE sent me some ink samples. That's what was all over my hand during the Draco video. <laughs> um, Customs apparently had opened some of them. So he wanted me to try some Caveco inks out. So this is Caveco Velvet Black. I think it's called Velvet. Black for sure. And, you know, for a cheap little pen like this, I think there's some actual character to that line. You know, hardly a flex nib. And uh, while pocket pens may not be my favorite thing, they have their place and their use. And the hike is one of those places. It is going to be super hot this afternoon. Actually, we're headed into a period of extreme heat, so uh, any hiking I do will be in the morning. So if you hear my air conditioner kick on from time to time, I'm sorry. Live with it. Because otherwise, I have to live with the heat. Um, did that for several years and uh, decided no more. So I really always liked how this pen looks. Don't know why. It's not like it's that special. But... Uh, I'm going to post it, apparently. I don't usually post pens. So this is the Aurora Style. Oops, let's go down the line. Um, 
I remember Matt Armstrong did a video on this pen and he absolutely hated it. But I like it. And that's the thing. If I hate a pen, you may like it. If I like a pen, you may hate it. So uh, all you can get from this is uh, impressions. You can't really get from any of these pen videos whether the pen is for you or not. Uh, just watch a few of them from different people and uh, make a decision. Ideally, you would handle it yourself, but, uh, you know, we had a pandemic. And also, I'm going to guess most of you are like me and you don't live anywhere near where you could get your hands on any of these pens. So you're relying entirely on videos and blogs to find out about these pens. And... Then people like me mess you up even more because most of my videos are vintage pens that are a little more difficult to find. Actually, it's funny. My Draco video is up at the level of views where my pens in use usually are. And uh, my vintage videos never get there. It's just kind of funny. So the market is for modern pens. So this is a Parker Frontier. Very nice pen. It actually reminds me a lot of, uh, oh it's medium, uh, the Parker Sonnet. In fact I'm thinking about doing a comparison between the two steel nib Parker Sonnets as a video. Or geez did I just say that? Between this and the steel nib Parker Sonnet is the video. Uh, the ink in it right now, platinum, platinum, <laughs> carbon black, which is one of those nano inks that, uh, instead of being a pigment, it's actually, uh, or a dye, I should say, it's a pigment suspended in water, and it's small enough that it stays suspended. But then once the water evaporates, it is there permanently. It does make it a little bit more challenging to clean out of a pen. So proper pen maintenance with such inks is important. And maybe make sure it's a pen you actually can clean fairly easily. We'll take a trip back to the 70s. Probably. Maybe the 60s. My Schaefer Imperial Deluxe 2. This is a fun pen. This one can easily be a daily writer. I had this ink in a different pen for a while. Oh, no nib size written there, but that looks like a fine. And uh, I kind of missed it, so I put it in this one when I inked it up. So it's Califolio. Aurora. Oh, besides the air conditioner, if you do hear thumping and such from outside, my neighbor had a house fire. Everybody's okay, but there was extensive damage to... A big section of the house and of course smoke damage everywhere else so there are people over there tearing it apart and uh, loading up the dumpster and so on so uh, if you hear that I just heard heard it so if you hear that that's what's going on outside Oh, just a nice orange color. <laughs> so my next pen, I uh, wanted a pen from Poland. I didn't know if any had ever been made in Poland, but, you know, my last name is Polish, so I felt like I should have at least one Polish pen. So here it is. Not that great of a pen, honestly, but uh, if you hold it just right, it makes an interesting line. So this is an Inco. 
Uh, the ink in this is a little nicer. It's Birmingham pens. I haven't heard too much about how uh, friendly Birmingham pens are for vintage pens. I don't mind with a piston filler or this one's a syringe filler, but with sack fillers, you know, I want to be a little more careful. Uh, so Birmingham pens. The full name is Allegheny River Twilight, but we'll just write Twilight because that's how it's sold. So I haven't heard too much about them. You know, people generally seem to like them. But a lot of my, a lot of the people I watch who use these inks are also basically modern pen buyers. So I'm just kind of curious. I've heard nothing vintage-wise. And I don't think they're as controversial as some of the Noodler's inks are. Maybe not as heavy a dialogue. One thing uh, for sure, even in my wettest pen, they dry a lot faster than Noodler's inks do. <laughs> this, oh, this lighting really shows off that nice sharp, sharp blue finish. Uh, so this is uh, named Sharp Blue after a uh, Oh, where's that cathedral? Oh, <laughs> cathedral in shark, gosh. Wow, where is my brain? Yes. <laughs> um, anyway, apparently it's modeled after the stained glass windows in that cathedral. Um, you know, if you ever look at a classic cathedral design... Um, you know, there's a lot of architectural innovation there, but the real goal behind a lot of it is to transport people and make them feel like they're closer to heaven when they're in the church. That's why there's the soaring roof and uh, all the uh, fine stained glass and all the magnificent artwork and such. You know, it's something that wouldn't have been in the daily life of the people going to those churches. Drew a blank there for a second what my ink was. So that's what's going on with the classic cathedral design. Um, Emma era, wow. You know, your smaller country churches can't quite manage that, but, you know, they do their best. You know, that's why you'll see they have the peaked windows and usually a higher roof and things because uh, they're emulating those classic designs. I have found it interesting what some modern churches have done you know, trying to get away from that, and yet still have that. Like, there's a very interesting Presbyterian church in Bismarck, North Dakota, that's super modern architecture. I'd kind of like to see inside of it. Don't want to go to it, but uh, I'd like to see inside it. This is my Aurora 88, which has been my daily writer pen this week. Uh, speaking of design... This is uh, inspired by the Parker 51, but definitely goes its own route, and it's a very classic pen. Um, there used to be a channel who has taken down all of his videos, unfortunately, but uh, Pell Halle, who did a interesting video on this one, the Parker 51, and one other pen, I don't remember what it was. But anyway, he, he was making the point that uh, about their design. He went deep into who designed them and why and how are they similar, how are they different, how much would the pen cost if it was made now, you know, all those different things. And uh, you know, his, his videos were always very long, but always very interesting. So I'm not sure what happened that he took all of them down, but... I know he had a couple up that he would get some nastiness in the comments over, so uh, maybe that's why. I, I don't know, but anyway. Uh, so those are the pens that I've been using this week. I feel like there was something I was going to show you. Not seeing it. Oh, well. If I, I guess if I was going to show it to you, I should have had it over here. All right, so those are the pens that I've been using this week. Um, if you're wondering why this curtain is closed, it's because the east sun is shining into it and it makes it really hot in here. So uh, energy efficiency.
I have insulated curtains, and they're not just for winter, they're for summer too. <laughs> um, but I, I open them up in the afternoon. Um, I enjoy the pens I have this week. I, uh, I don't know, it was just something about the batch that I've got I, but I just enjoyed. Um, I've got a couple of things I wrote down, not like a huge amount. Uh, one of the things I wrote down is, uh, I read, uh, oh, it's over there, I don't want to grab it. I read Tom Iser, Thomas Eisern's um, Pacing Dakota and uh, just couldn't get my notes done in time for to do a video. Uh, so I, it'll be a week late, but that's okay. Meantime, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to do something fun for me because... Uh, well, I just want to. So I think I'm going to do the four Hyperion novels, the Hyperion Cantos, uh, as my next four reviews, kind of boom, boom, boom in a series. And then I really want to read Johnny Pierce's um, new newest, va uh, not vampire, zombie novel. So that'll be something else I'll be reading. So you can look forward to that if, if you're at all a fan of my book reviews. Um, one mistake I made, I've been... Uh, Okay, actually, I've been reading the electronic version of this mostly. Wow, that helped a lot. <laughs> uh, I must have bumped it while I was setting the camera up. But anyway, I've been mostly reading the electronic version of this. This is H.P. Lovecraft, uh, The Complete Fiction. This is a Barnes & Noble edition. And that's a heavy brute. And mostly I've been reading them, like, in the evening, but, you know, at night when I'm about to go to bed or... You know, you wake up a little earlier than planned in the morning. You can read a little bit. Um, some good, some not so good in there. I, I hadn't quite decided how I'm going to cover him. Uh, but this week I just said, you know, that's enough HP Lovecraft for a while. Because some of it just gets hard to take. And I don't mean the horror element so much as some of the social things in it. So... I just decided to take a break on it for a while and come back to it. Uh, interesting, but uh, yeah. And that'll give me time to think too, how am I going to review? Am I going to review individual works or just him as an author overall? I haven't decided yet. But anyway, it is coming, just maybe not right away. Um, one thing I've been thinking about a lot lately since my two trips this spring is how much I missed normal life over the past year and some, I uh, basically got out of my small town like two, three times for necessary trips to Dickinson, and that was it. And so I've lived for a year plus change basically in my small town. And, you know, I, I talk about how in the winter sometimes when the roads are bad for weeks on end, I get kind of cabin fevery. Yeah, I, I, I really missed getting out, and I don't need to get out where people are. I'm not somebody who's going to go to Dickinson and go hit up the bars, because that's just not my thing. But, uh, you know, just this getting out, and, it, and it, it's made me think, well, why didn't I get out at all during the pandemic, and why did I get out so seldom before the pandemic? I mean, I got out, but not a lot. And it's just made me realize that, I need to appreciate the things around me and live my life because uh, there may come a point where I'm not able to anymore. So, uh, like, well, I was going to do it this morning, but like I said, the, the thunder, I thought, oh, I don't really want to drive all the way up there and have rain. So, uh, but possibly tomorrow or Sunday morning, I'm going to take a hike up at uh, Painted Canyon. It's a four, I don't know, about a four-mile hike. It's drops an elevation of 400 and some feet, and most of that is right at the beginning, so, yeah, you got that facing you when you come back home, but, oh, well. But I'm thinking I'm going to go up there early, early morning, maybe hike it during that golden hour when it's still cool, because, uh, yeah, I was working in my garden, and my, well, I was dealing with some weeds in my lawn, too, because they're the only thing that's green in it at the moment, and, uh, ah, man, was I sweating, and I wasn't even working that hard, so definitely that'll be an early morning hike, but uh, it's just one of those things that makes me think, why have I not done that? I've lived here how long? 
15, 16 years, it's right there. I've never hiked it. So, doing that, uh, I'm going to tour the south unit of the Badlands. I, I'm not going to hike it because by then it'll be getting hot. But uh, I'm going to tour it in my car and just make note of where I would like to hike. And I'm thinking some fall excursions. Or maybe yet the summer, but I also kind of want to get down to the Black Hills this summer because of my whole Great Sioux War project. So, you know, there is that. But uh, anyway, I just realizing that I need to get out and uh, appreciate what's around me. And a lot of this that I'm getting out for, even during the lockiest downy part of the lockdown, because North Dakota was pretty light on the lockdown, I wouldn't have needed a mask, wouldn't have needed to worry about social distancing, would have been just fine, because you're hiking and you're outdoors, or you're driving around the Badlands. There's no risk there, so why did I lock down at home? Why did I not go over to Montana? Uh, wh why did I not go to Wyoming? Why not to South Dakota? You know, I just locked down completely and in a lot of ways shut down. I uh, realized how much I shut down as I uh, been doing some house cleaning and realized how far, far, far ahead of me I let the house get. So, uh, you know, now that my upstairs is habitable again, I mean, it's not perfect. It'll never be perfect. But uh, now that it is habitable again, I'm realizing, yeah, I lived with that. Why? And I don't want to get into analyzing psychology or anything, especially my own. But that's what I did, and uh, I think a lot of people did. Um, got to work in my basement yet, but that one will actually be the easiest. Uh, and I'm enjoying eating food from my garden. That's one thing that kept me sane last summer. That's actually one of the three trips I took to Dickinson was I, I made the excuse that I gotta buy plants from my garden. So I did. But uh, yeah, and I'm later this summer I'm gonna have to close shop because I put that off for a year and it's getting to the necessary point for a lot of my clothing. So huh, that'll give me an excuse to get to, well, not can't really buy men's clothes in Dickinson anymore unless I go to Walmart, so that'll get me to like Dick or Bismarck or Rapid City, I guess. So, anyway, excuse to get out. <laughs> um, unless the Delta variant comes attacking, you know, I uh, I have the vaccine. I, you can get it, you can spread it, I guess, if you have the vaccine, but uh, your symptoms are generally much less, and uh, I. Uh, I feel it's a shame we've allowed it to become a political thing in this country rather than a science thing. I, uh, as a science teacher, I hate to see parts of this country turning so anti-science. And the groundwork has been laid for years with the, you know, te trying to get creationism into schools or uh, in fact one of the famous court cases on that was from my home state of Pennsylvania uh, Dover versus or how did that go Dover versus something anyway the Dover case um, they uh, they tried to you know backdoor creationism in under this intelligent design thing and uh, luckily the judge in the case saw right through it um, and, and you still see it being attempted in different states you know t laws about you know teach both sides and all that well they're not two sides of that um you know that that's one big origin of the earth you've got people out there who seriously think the earth is six thousand years old you know, so we, we've developed this anti-science culture, and now we actually have people trying to be taken seriously and being taken seriously in some circles with this whole flat earth thing. And it makes me not want to use my joke anymore. I used to say, oh, I don't live at the edge of the earth, but you can see it from here, because I feel like somebody I talk to is going to be like, really? No, oh, it's a joke. The earth is round. There's no edge, but... You know, I, I don't know what to do about that. So uh, I wrote a couple of links down below. Um, 
I was going to talk about them, but now I just really don't feel like feel like it. Uh, the first two are kind of this horrible, horrible t-shirt. You know, I like to wear these humorous t-shirts. You matter. Unless you, well, how's that go? Unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light squared, then you energy. I like that. Or squirrel shirts or things that go around making people happy or make me happy. And then there is this shirt being sold at some biker bar in Cheyenne, Wyoming that talks about execution as a cure, of a certain class of people as a cure for AIDS. Only it uses two slurs to begin with the letter F. And, uh, yeah. Lovely. Why would you even want to walk around with that? Ah! I know what I would think of somebody wearing a shirt like that. You know, spread happiness wherever you go instead of hate. The other thing I just, uh... There's this guy on Newsmax, apparently, because I don't have cable TV, so I don't get to see this stuff, but according to the Washington Post, is actually saying, no, we shouldn't be using this COVID vaccine because it goes against nature. Uh, and then he starts on about evolution. And so, okay, so we don't vaccinate our kids, we don't vaccinate against smallpox, we don't, well, that's eradicated, so that ship has sailed. Uh, we don't eradicate... Uh, Vaccinate against these horrible childhood diseases? We just let kids get them and suffer? Does he want to go back to the days of the polio epidemic? You know, I just... Of course, it's political again. It's it's not a legitimate scientific belief. It's political. I, I doubt he thought it through. He's just like, oh, that's a clever comment. Um, who knows if he even believes in evolution, to be honest. But a lot of his audience may not. But anyway, I just, uh, I wrote, I'll leave the links down there, but, uh, that's all the more I want to say about them. I, I'm enjoying reading more. I enjoyed my live stream last week. It was, uh, supposed to be an hour long. That ended up to be a two and a half hour ordeal, but it was fun. I, uh, got to interact with people from all over the world. And when I started buying fountain pens as a, was I 10 when I bought my first fountain pen? 9 or 10. That would have been impossible. I wouldn't have met any fountain pen people from India or gotten inks from a guy in Portugal. Well, partly because I was a 10-year-old kid, but, <laughs> you know, if I'd been a 45-year-old man at that time, I couldn't have done that. So we live in a pretty amazing time. And, uh, you know, to be able to do that live, I don't... I don't know if that was possible on YouTube when I started on YouTube. You know, you, you look at the history of this channel. I actually opened this uh, this channel back in July 1st of 2007. So what would this be? 14 years I've been doing this channel. Um, <laughs> and now this channel, I mean, part of it was getting off doing the horrible travel videos because I used to not have very good sound, and I, my cam well, the cameras back then just weren't as good. Um, but I just travel different places in North Dakota and then put together the video footage, and that would be my videos. And it was a lot of work, so I only did it occasionally. But, uh, you know, that was how I started, and then I forget when I did my first fountain pen video, but that's when it really took off. So uh, I know one or two of you who have actually been with me since those beginnings. I had to take a lot of those early videos down because not knowing any better back then, I used some copyrighted music. Uh, now that I know, but well, everybody was doing it back then and I just didn't know any better. And as I learned more, I said, oh, <laughs> had to take them down. So uh, learning as I go along and hopefully improving. Today, you know, I spent half the video with the light turned the wrong way but uh i have to have bumped it when i sat down because I, I know i checked the camera to see how i looked and photographed myself so i have to have bumped it because i know where i want the chair i want to be between the window and the light so anyway i am babbling now because uh i'm babbling <laughs> i guess i wanted to talk so anyway, I want to thank you for watching. And if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, 
I would invite you to subscribe. And are you getting out and appreciating the freedom again? Or are you in one of those areas that's locked down? Or are you still nervous about getting out? Let us know down in the comments. And I'll just add, even if you're locked down, don't forget to live. There's a lot of things you can do to live. Uh, and speaking personally, that would include taking care of your health and taking care of your environment. So, well, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.